Well, g'day guys, good news. Got a DRO, didn't get a black eye, Dolly Parton didn't sing D I V O R C E, and I was allowed to sleep in the same bed that night. That to me is a pretty big win. All jokes aside, Beck was all for the idea. She said if it's going to make it easier, just, just get it. Now, Hair and Forbes had a sale or a package deal on the DRO. They got their own monitor now. Instead of use, they use Sino scales, but they've brought out their own monitor, or their own branded monitor. It's probably just a knockoff of some other brand, I'm not sure, but it looks all right. It don't look too bad. I'm pretty chuffed, to be honest. I never thought I'd have a DRO on the lathe. It was definitely worth selling that little mill and uh, getting a DRO. I'm pretty stoked. It's going to, from what I, all the comments I've had about the DRO, everyone reckons it's a massive time saver. So I was getting sick and tired of when I'm doing real fine jobs, setting up indicators and all that sort of crap, it's just time consuming. And then you throw filming on top, it just adds a whole new level to the time. So this should make it a lot quicker. So what I've gone and done, because I've never fitted up glass scales before, I've gone ahead and fitted up the one on the cross slide. Now that was as simple as buggery because there's no extra bracketry needed. All I needed was a five mil spacer to go behind the reed head. So that was basic. It was an easy one to fit up. This one's not going to be as easy. Being longer and got to make up some bracketry for it. I do did come with brackets, but I don't think they're going to be what I need. Um, I've mounted the monitor. That's only two bolts. Like I, There's that many videos out on YouTube how to fit these up. Um, I couldn't see the sense in wasting your guys' times watching me drill two holes and mount a monitor. I'll show you the way I've done the cross slide scale. That was easy. It only took a couple of hours. Just spit arsing around and I had it done. So, and it's working. I've had that scale working on the monitor. It's actually looking pretty good. It's pretty accurate too. I put a dial indicator on it and it's, yeah, it's accurate. So from what I've heard about these Sino scales, they are a good scale. Uh, I haven't heard of many people having issues with them. So I pulled the backsplash off the lathe. I pulled all the crap out from behind the lathe, which was more than what I thought there was. Um, give it a rough clean, so yeah, don't judge me, please. Anyway, we're going to have a gander. Right, yeah, so this is the one on the cross slide. Really, really simple to fit this one up. Um, just worked out where I had the, the right travel for the, the reader not to bottom out on it on either end. Um, this one, this scale comes with a backing plate that holds this lip for the cover. So you've got to mount the backing mount the backing plate and then mount the scale to the backing plate. And then mine worked out to be a five mil um, piece of plate I put in the back there to space the reader out and that works as good as gold so it's not a bad setup the cover plate sits on and locks into that groove like so and the good thing about that is nothing's king well it's got to it's got to go down into a groove back out of the groove and get down beside that and the reader there's any coolant or crap so it pretty much seals it off and just two small screws to hold down the top plate. So that, I couldn't say the sense in film and that, it was just really simple install. And didn't it didn't take me long to fit that one actually. Hardest part I found was drilling these holes nice and straight in the casting. And um, getting it so that it was uh, the right height, but yeah, that was simple enough in the end. And I've checked it with the um, with the dial indicator, and it's 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 spot on. So cable management's going to be a bit of a headache, I think. And I may have to trim a little bit out the back of this cover. There's an end plate on the scale cover. 
Yeah, I may have to just trim a little bit out of that. I'm not sure yet. Just when it comes back over, it does get. You can see there, it's just starting to rub on the on this sheathing. So that won't be hard to sort out. So the monitor, this is the hair of Forbes branded one. Yeah, it's nice clear display. I'll switch it on. I've been through and had to play with the settings of it. Yeah, this had another figure on the end of this, like yeah, three after the decimal. Knocked it back to two. I went through the manual. A little bit confusing to start with till I got my head around it, but it wasn't too bad. The calculator is a little bit different. Um, would have been nice if it took up a bit bigger in the screen, so. Yeah, it's it's not too bad. It's got everything I'll need on it anyway. And that's just simply bolted on. Two bolts down the back here. Nothing outrageously hard about that. But yeah, hopefully this model will be a good thing. I like this sort of display more than I like the old Sino type that has the two different Yeah, I think this is a bit more nicer a bit more modern Okay, I'm in behind the back of the lathe Like I haven't got me guts in any fatter I wouldn't fit I've lined up the scale and marked the first hole Once I get that drilled I'll tap it mount the scale up, um, use the level box to put me in a ballpark so I can drill and tap the other end. Then when it comes to doing the saddle, I'll just make up the bracketry to suit. I think that's the best way to go. Yeah, I don't know how else to do it, but there's not a lot of room to play with in behind here, I tell you. My guts wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't want to be any bigger. Just tapping this M4. Oh yeah, what I've done there is I put a through mill spacer behind the back so if there's any imperfection in the back of the casting of the, the bed hopefully I can align everything just by putting them two three mil one at each end spacers and, um, get everything aligned up a bit of luck it's pretty hard to film this I tell you okay I've got that zeroed out to the bed. What I've done then was lifted it up till it read zero. And then I marked the hole with the drill. And this will give me a little bit of play up and down. It'll also give me room there to put the cover on, which won't interfere if I ever take the gap out. And then I'll just have to make the bracketry to suit um, to suit the reader. I'll get this tapped and get it mounted up and then start running indicators and see how close we are. I can't get this any better. You see the big clock that'll start coming back up when we get towards the end. So it does have a dip in the middle. I sort of I can't do anything about that. This is dropping off less than half a thou or about half a thou. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I can't, I can't get any better. I've tried, I've shimmed it, done all sorts. But I reckon that's going to be good enough. Okay, so this is what I come up with. Just bring a piece of, I think it's 40 mil flat bar, down to a piece of angle. I haven't bolted the cover on yet. That piece of angle is slotted underneath and bolts to this bottom of the scale it's got the adjustment on it here so I've got to take it all off and round the corners off paint everything yet and put the do some cable management 
I uh, just got Trevor to send me some photos of his was done at the factory in Sydney or here in Forbes in Sydney done fitted his scales so he, sh he sent me a photo of how they've been attached or how they've done theirs so I'll be doing something similar I reckon hopefully <laughs> so next time you see this hopefully that bracket will be all painted and everything will be back together so I'm sorry I didn't film none of this, but you've all seen me make slots and do all that. But if you people have asked how, if I can film how to do it, how, how I've done it, so this is just quick and dirty, but it's working. <laughs> okay, so I've painted the brackets, and uh, that's flickering between oh, 0.95 and 90 degrees. So I've just got everything, just setting everything up square with the angle box as best I can. And just got to set the reader so it's not, not touching anywhere and glides along easy. Got that all mounted up. And you can see a bit of flex there. So the scale is not touching anywhere. I used an angle box on this bracket here, got it absolutely dead level. This is level to the everything's level to the to the bed of the lathe, and everything's stitched up tight. So I've got the holes drilled for the cover, so I'll get that on, and then I've got to sort out some management for the cables. It's going to take a bit of doing. Okay, it's probably flickering in the camera, but we have both axes working. The monitor actually looks pretty good. I'll, show you what I've done with the cable management. Okay, cable management is they give you these brackets they clamp together over top of that rectangle tube and then just feeds down underneath the machine there. Okay, it comes out from behind the motor on the lathe along the bed loops back around or it's attached just under the reader there now comes around, loops back, and a couple of both, yeah, a few P clamps hold it all into place. So the table or the bed carriage can go from one end to the other and basically nothing lays in the tray and it's yeah, it's not running tight or anything so it's all it all worked out really well. All I gotta do now is get a hand to get the uh, backsplash back on. And I can button this job up, I'll go back in the machine down, oil it back up, wipe all the scales and everything down, all the covers down. It's got to stay clean for half a year. Okay, I've just finished modifying the coolant system. Um, mainly the upright to mount it, nothing leaks. I've just topped it all up with, I'm trying Hangster's 5080 this time. Always use 5030. Trying the 5080, see how that goes. So just a simple bracket down over the back here. It's where it originally mounted off before, but I just made up the new leg. Um, yeah, it just looks a bit neater. But I will eventually replace this with some proper lock line. But it's fairly costly, that stuff. But nothing leaks, and um, got plenty of only length there at the moment to get over to the tool so that buttons this job right up lays back to um back to normal with a DRO and a better looking cooling system not a heap of brass fittings <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that well there we go we finally got a DRO on this lathe I've been hanging out for a DRO for a while just quietly setting up indicators now all the time doing fiddly jobs is a pain in the ass so I'm glad I've Bit the bullet. I'm still not divorced. My dinner's still on the table every night. And I even had breakfast built this morning. That's even better. So I'm not in the shit yet inside the house. But give me time. Another thing, I'm really glad I took the time and redone the coolant. It's just a simple 6mm bolt on the back. If, it, if it's in the way, just under the bolt, slide down the holder and throw it in the tray and it's out of the way. I should have done that a long time ago, 
but I'm glad I've done it now. And I reckon this DRO is going to save me a ton of time. So I realised I did skip over a bit of it. This scale here was really simple to put on. There was a bit, bit more work, a bit more tricky to do the back one. But there's plenty of videos out there of guys fitting these up. Shoot, if I can do it, anyone can. So, yeah, I think it was a, I think it was a very wise purchase. Anyway, thanks for watching. And um, I hope I have something a bit better for next week's video. This, uh, this chemo is knocking around this, this turn, so it's not the piss clean out of me, actually. I find it very hard to get any motivation, which I do struggle with most of the times, but a bit harder now. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed, and see you next week with a bit of luck. Thanks for watching. Hooray!